Hi, it's me, the Engine Cadet, and we're going to review what we just saw and add a little bit more information. It might seem a little basic to some of you, but I was actually asked these questions on board, and I was surprised at how much I forgot. But anyway, what we saw was the combustion cycle of a four-stroke medium-speed diesel engine, and what I want to do is compare that with a pressure volume diagram of the diesel cycle. So let's check it out. Let's start making the pressure volume diagram of our diesel cycle. Making the diagram, let's put four points. Let's try to figure out what these four points mean. Making a line between these two points, we can see that this line represents the maximum amount of volume that you can have inside the cylinder. And as you can see here, this is between bottom dead center and the top of the cylinder. So we're going to write here bottom dead center. If we make a line between these two points, it represents the minimum amount of volume you can have inside the cylinder. Which you can see here is when the piston is in top dead center and it's between top dead center and the top of the cylinder. We call this space the combustion chamber, which is where the combustion will take place. Now, if we make a line between these two points, you can see it represents the minimum amount of pressure you can have inside the cylinder. If you remember, in the beginning of the video, I showed you the turbocharger. A turbocharger gives scavenge air, which is high pressure air we give inside the cylinder. This scavenge air goes through a scavenge air receiver, which is like a manifold, always waiting to go inside the cylinders. When an inlet valve is open, scavenge air automatically enters the cylinder. So this, at all times, is the minimum amount of pressure we can have inside a cylinder. Now, if we make a line between these two points, it's the maximum amount of pressure we can have inside a cylinder, which happens when we have combustion. So we'll call this Pmax. Let's see how the different processes of the combustion cycle affect this diagram. Let's begin putting this process on paper. The first process is the emission stroke. 
In the emission stroke, the piston goes to bottom dead center and the inlet valve is open, allowing scavenged air to enter the cylinder. So as you can see, it's at the point of maximum volume and scavenged air is the minimum amount of pressure that we can have inside the cylinder. So it's this point, maximum volume and minimum pressure. After the emission stroke, we have the compression stroke. So, the inlet valve is closed and the piston goes from bottom dead center to top dead center. As you can see, volume starts to decrease and pressure, since the air has nowhere to go, starts to increase. With it, the air also increasing in temperature until we reach just before top dead center. You see, in the combustion stroke, when the piston reaches top dead center, it's at the maximum compression pressure, which is this point right here. However, when the fuel injector puts fuel, so the fuel valve is open, when the piston is in top dead center, occurs the expansion of this fuel, which starts the combustion stroke. But in this point, it's the maximum pressure point when the fuel is injected and starts to expand. The combustion stroke is when the piston goes from top dead center and the fuel expanding pushes the piston down to bottom dead center. So we have a decrease of pressure and also an increase of volume. So this is this line right here. And when the piston goes from bottom dead center back to top dead center, the exhaust valve is open, further decreasing the pressure in the cylinder because now the air can escape, which is the exhaust gases. And just before it reaches top dead center, the inlet valve is open, allowing scavenge air to scavenge or clean the rest of the cylinder and pressure is dropped even further to our minimum amount of pressure, which is our scavenge air pressure, which completes our cycle. The diesel cycle is sometimes called a constant pressure cycle because usually they take, in an ideal situation, the pressure from the compression and the combustion as equal. Although this is not the case, there are various test methods that show there is pressure of compression and pressure of combustion, where the pressure of combustion is higher. Also, in an ideal cycle, we're not taking in various factors, such as heat produced by friction, by the piston compressing and returning to the bottom dead center, as well as the basic heat of the cylinder. When there's combustion, the cylinder also heats up. That's why we need cooling water for the engine. Now that you saw the diesel cycle, and you can see the different processes of the combustion cycle, maybe you can check out the beginning animation again. And if you had any doubts, you could clear them. Okay, thanks for reviewing with me. <laughs> and hopefully if they ask this question again, we can give a better answer. <laughs> Till next time.